praise you, praise you. We lift you up, 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 we
Lord, I thank you for this group of young people. Lord, I thank you for this, uh, this group of people who are here. God, I pray that, um, Lord, you would work in our service. I mean, our, our first and foremost purpose of being here today is to worship you, the one true living God. And, Father, to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit would work among us, Lord, that you would work in the mind and heart of each individual here. And, Father, that we would open our minds and hearts, and we would receive your word. And, Father, we would be obedient to your word, Father. I ask, Lord, that you bless each person here today. And it's in the name of the Lord Jesus we pray. Amen.
I'm a senior in ensemble, and I'm going to be reading from Psalm 100, 1 through 5. It says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Um, when I was reading this verse, I was thinking about how easy it is to get caught up in our day and caught up about the things that we dread doing, like a test that we have coming up or a meeting at work that we just don't want to go to. We lose sight of all the amazing things that God has provided us, clean clothes, food, a place to worship without any fear, and just family. Um, as his creation, praising him is unavoidable. If we as humans don't praise him, his creation will, his earth will. Praising God is something that we as Christians should delight in. It's our job on this earth to glorify and lift up his name, to bring awareness to who he is and what he plans to do. Praising God often helps us overcome the worry that we face each day. By thanking him for just the simple things helps us focus on the good things that happen throughout the day instead of the bad. When thanking him, praising God looks different for everybody. It could be singing, preaching, or just being a kind soul to somebody who needs it. Even the smallest things bring glory to God. Your kind acts will bring more attention to the Father, which is our purpose on this earth. Our next song is A New Name Written Down in Glory, and this is one of my favorite songs because it reminds me of how God seeks all of us out, and He chooses us to be part of His mission and part of His glory, and to be able to praise His name openly and not have any fear is something that I think we should personally thank Him for every day. So, if you'll please stand and sing with us.
Um, I'm going to read Psalm 139 for y'all. Uh, Search me, O God, and know my heart. To the choir master, a Psalm of David. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I free from, flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings off the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is dark to you. The night is as bright as day, for darkness is as light with you. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In the book were written every one of them. The days that were formed from me, for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I would not count them, they are more than the sand. I awake and I am still with you. O oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God. O men of blood, depart from me. They speak against you with malicious intent. Your enemies take your name in, in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? Do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with complete hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there are any gr grievous way in my, in my way. Wow. And lead me in the way everlasting. So I just, about this, like Sheol, um, that's a word that's used a couple times in the Old Testament. And Sheol, to most people, would just, they go, oh, that's, that's hell, right? But it's not just that. It's like a place where we're just stuck alone from God. We're, we can make our bed there, but he forgives us. He will always forgive us. And in this next song, just call out that he's there because no matter what you do, he is there for you, church. And just please um, sing out on this next song and just let us be a ministry for you because he's there. If y'all would please stand and sing with us.
search the earth below He's there, I make my bed in hell He's there, no matter where I go He's there, where can I go from his fear? He's there, where can I go from his presence? He's there, no matter where I go He's there, no matter where I go He's there, if I search the heavens high If I search the earth below If I make my bed in hell No matter where I go Where can I go from his fear? If I search the earth below, if I make my bed in hell, no matter where I go, where can I go from His spirit? Where can I go from His presence? No matter where I go, no matter where I go, oh, He's in the room. just remain standing for just a minute we're going to enter into a season of prayer you know when I was a child I remember hearing in church a lot we're going to go enter into a season of prayer and I want to do that this morning and maybe a little differently I don't know what I want to do is each of us to pray in our own minds and hearts um, and I'm going to give you some ideas and things to think about as you're praying but we're going to take just a season for part of the service and just one-on-one -on -one, pray with the Lord Jesus I want you to listen think about the song we just sang he's in the room if you don't understand that God is here then you're wrong the Lord God Almighty is here you know probably most of you have seen the, the show The Chosen I'll watch that show sometimes and it's I really enjoyed that and I'll see the Lord Jesus walking around doing the things there and and sometimes it will occur to me that that same man, the same man who, who uh, fed the 5,000, the same man that, that uh, healed the blind, the same man who was crucified on a cross and rose from the dead, is alive today and is here. And that is the person that we talk to when we pray. Him, through, we talk to our Lord God through Jesus Christ. The Bible calls him our great high priest and just this week I was reading how, how he understands everything that we go through because he has been tempted in every way, yet he did not sin. So if you would close your eyes with me and let's, let's just enter a season of prayer for a moment. So first of all, what I'd like you to do is just think about who we're praying to. Give honor and praise and glory to the one true living God. recognize who you are we are people a people who were hopelessly lost in our sin but the Lord Jesus Christ came and died and rose from the dead and gave us salvation and so if you know the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior thank him for saving you ask him to cleanse you of all unrighteousness and forgive you for your sin
Bible says that, he, that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. The Bible also says that we are to be holy as He is holy. So ask the Lord God to help you become holy as He is. Now, there are those among us who are hurting. There are those who are sick, those who are suffering, those who are lonely, those who are scared, those who are confused. Pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. Ask the Lord to open your mind and heart that you may experience Him in a special way this morning as you strive to worship Him today. Father, we ask that you would have your way in this service. Oh, Lord God, I pray, Father, that you would work in our minds and hearts. Father, that you would bring about repentance, that you would bring about holiness, or that you would bring about compassion. And, Lord, that you would help us to be your hands and feet, Father, as we do your work. It's in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, our hope our salvation that we pray. Amen. You may be seated.
church. My name is Campbell Johnson and I'm a freshman at Grace Christian Academy and this morning I'll be talking to you about the power of the Word of God. But before we start I'd like to thank each and every one of you guys for letting us have the opportunity to worship with you and praise our wonderful God with you. But this morning I have three points for us. The first one is that the Word, the Bible, is the book of truth, is the book our rock, our foundation, and it is the book that brings life. So first, I'd like to start with the book of truth. And with the Bible, there is not a single historical contradiction in all of history. There is not a single contradiction in history with the Bible. There has been hundreds and hundreds of fulfilled prophecies leading back to Jesus as our suffering servant about 2,000 years ago. And just from then, then, there's been many prophecies fulfilled, and there's still some to be fulfilled. The word truth is mentioned 232 times in the Bible. The word truth is mentioned 232 times in this book. And in Psalms 119, 160, it says, The word is true from the beginning. From Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21, it is nothing but the truth. This is the most, the most true book in history. You can spend thousands and hundreds of dollars on a college textbook, or you can spend about $20 on this, and this has more truth than any textbook you could ever buy. And in John 1-1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. This is God's word. He speaks to us through this. The second point is the book, Our Rock. And I like to start with a scripture, and it's Luke 8, 15. And it says, as for that in the good soil, there are those hearing the word, hold it fast and honest, and good heart bear fruit with patience. Those who cling to the word will produce good fruits. And th this book is all that we need. It is our instructions, is our guide to life. It talks about Jesus' life, his disciples' life. It talks about how his disciples were changed. They were changed by just being with God and just talking with him. Some of them were persecuting Christians before they met God, and now they're praising him and walking with him. Proverbs, the book of Proverbs has more wisdom than we could ever need. And then Psalms has 150 chapters about songs. It talks about creation to the end of times. And there's millions of miracles that were portrayed in the Bible. This is all that we need for life. It has everything we could ever need. And that brings us to our last point. The book is the book that brings life. And so we'll be reading... If I can get it pulled up here. We'll be reading third, or excuse me, fourth John. If you want to turn to your Bibles, you can turn there. Fourth John. Yeah, yeah, John four. <laughs> we'll 
we'll start in verse 7. And before we read that, I just want to give a little background to where they are. So this is the story about the Samaritan woman. And during this time, Samaria was the most evil place you could ever go through. And the Jews would not even talk to Samaritans. They would, when they would travel to go through, they would have to cross the Jordan River, go up, and then cross the Jordan River again to avoid Samaria. That's how evil it was during this time. Well, Jesus wanted to stop by and talk to a young lady at a well, so that's where we're going to pick up. If you have your Bibles, we'll be in John 4, verse 7. And it says, A woman from Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who is it that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will, never be, will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give them will never thirst again. The water that I give him will become to him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I will not be thirsty or have to come draw water again. And then he picks up and he confronts her about many husbands that she has. And she has five husbands and they begin to talk about that. And then we'll pick up in verse 26. It says, Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. And just then his disciples came back. They were marveled that he was talking with a woman. But no one said, what do you speak? Or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went away into town and said to the people, Come see a man who has told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? This woman's life was completely changed just by talking and having a quick conversation with Jesus. She had a past of many husbands and a lot of sin, but it doesn't matter because Jesus changed her like that. Jesus changes a lot of people we've seen in this story see him change Zacchaeus and then the man among tombs the man among the tombs was demonly possessed and nobody would dare to go near him but after having a conversation with Jesus he became a great man and was preaching to everybody about what God has done for him a US, US United States military veteran Brian Flannery you can read about this online he struggled with extreme PTSD from serving in Afghanistan. And for two years, he didn't smile, he didn't laugh, he didn't have any joy. He couldn't sleep at night, he attempted to kill himself, and just all these horrible things. But then he found the Word of God, and he said, for the first time in two years, he smiled and laughed after the first time hearing it. And that's the power of the Word. It, it can change many lives just like it did here. But for it to change your life, I'm going to tell you this story. There was a woman who once read a book, and it was like a novel, and she despised it. She hated it. She thought it was the worst book to ever be written. She didn't even finish the book. That's how bad it was. But a few years later, she fell in love and married the author of the book. After they got married, she read the book again, and she thought it was the most beautiful thing ever written. In order for the book to have an impact on your life or for you to love it, you must have a relationship or fall in love with the author. So with this, with our book, we must have a relationship with Jesus Christ before this can have an impact on us. Nothing that I said this morning matters unless we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And we're going to have the opportunity this morning for, for you guys who don't have a relationship with him to accept him into your heart. But will you say yes to God this morning or will you say, hmm, 
maybe next week. Well, if you say maybe next week, that's a delayed response, and the God of delayed response is a no. There was a boy who accepted Christ when not at church, and the following week going back, he was killed in a car accident. So what if he had said, maybe next week? He'd be burning in the pit of fire, but instead he is in heaven rejoicing with God each and every day. So what choice will you make this morning? We're going to have the band come up and we're going to sing another song. But as we sing this next song, you'll have the opportunity. The altar will be open. You have the choice to make to change your life. You can fall in love with the altar and let this book change your life. It doesn't matter your past. It doesn't matter how many times you've sinned or where you came from. It doesn't matter. None of it matters because Jesus Christ carries a burden for us each and every day. Psalm 68, 19. The Lord will save us from anything and he will continue to love and care for us even though we, we may sin and sin again. He always forgives us. So you'll have the choice this morning. And just think to yourself what choice you'll make. You can say yes to God. The altar will be open. We'll have people praying over you. Thank you, guys. We're going to sing this next song.
Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. to come with all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings you are my everything and I will adore you
Cause you're worthy of it all You're worthy of it all For from you are all things And to you are all things You deserve the glory First of all, I want to thank King Jesus for being here with us today. I want to thank these young people and Missy for being obedient to that King and coming and leading our worship today. I want to thank all of you for being here and joining in our worship. Let's leave here today different. Let's leave here today and telling others who Jesus is and why He matters. Brother George is going to come and pray for us. You can be seated. It'll be a long prayer. <laughs> Melissa. Tony went to college with Melissa, but I grew up with her. Well... She grew up, but I was always been old. I just wanted to thank you. She's a part of our church. Thurman Judy had done a real good job raising her. And I want to thank the parents. You all have done an excellent job with the kids, writing them up and giving them more support. The fine young ladies and gentlemen. I'd like you all to stand up and give your parents a hand, okay? Because they've done a great job with them. We love you. We appreciate what you've done. Thank you very much. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the blessings you give us. Thank you for the air we breathe, the trees we see, the love that you give us, your mercy, the grace, and all. Thank you most of all for your son that died on the cross, that we have an empty grave. Because you live, we can face tomorrow, knowing what a great day it will be. Not a great day we're going to be when we see you there. Oh, God, we love you so much. Thank you again for the cross. Thank you for each one of these people here today. Thank you for their families. Thank you for the support. And thank you for being a big part of our life. And thank you most of all for giving your son the die on the cross. All these things we pray and ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen.